So let's get started on making a landscape. So let's go to edit preferences and go to add-ons and install the add-on and locate the zip procedure landscapes right there. Be sure to enable it and then save your preferences if you want it to be enabled in your future Blender projects. Now let's of course delete the default queue because you know we don't need it. And it's also a weird tradition <laughs> with Blender tutorials. Uh, but let's go right here to the landscape. Then you'll see these panels right here. The first one is import landscape. Uh, so let's do that to of course import the landscape. Then if you go to Z and hit render or material preview, nothing will work um, because we need to switch it to cycles. So there we go. You can see, but we are seeing the texture right there. So that's pretty, and that's a good start. Also, let's increase our um, our model by pressing S and then 10. Um, so we need to change it to cycles. So just click on this and it'll automatically go to cycles. That's a pretty cool shortcut. Then you can go right here. Well, let me just adjust some of the settings for my Blender tutorials and of course change it to GPU. And then boom, we have all of these settings just to minimize displacement. These are all our main settings. You're probably seeing this right here. This is because of the default light, so just uh, select that and press X to delete. I'm going to open an HDR that I uh, recommend for this add-on. It will be incorporated in the add-ons and it's from um, polyhaven.com. And here we go. It's this hilly terrain. I really like it and it's really cool for this uh, type of in, uh, environment. It's the HDR that I used. Also, let's enable one more add-on. It's now not required, but it's just for the HDR. Uh, let's enable the node triangular. You probably know what this add-on is. Just click enable and then save your preferences to have it available every single time you make a new project. Go to the shading tab, select the world here, then hit Control T. I'll bring up this texture coordinate and mapping node things and then press C and go to render of course um, first things first let's position our camera let's go control alt notepad zero or go to view align view active camera to view then you can see our HDR right there so we need to so value of two maybe it's great okay I recommend saving the projects just go Control S and just save it. And once you save it, you can just press Control S to resave if you like. Select your landscape and go down to this uh, material preview. I'm so happy to announce that in the future update, it will actually be a shortcut right here on the panel. You can still edit right here, but it will be a panel right here, so it's much more easier. And everything will be break down to a separate category, so it's much more easier to display it. Texture type, you can change that to zero. That will be the default cool looking grass slash rock. You can really zoom in and see the detail. Sometimes it can be a little bit low poly, but that's because um, the plane. Let me just show you. If you want to apply this to a plane, let's go shift A, add a plane. Of course, let's scale it just to be a little bit more easier. Switch down to solid view. And then you need to tab in to edit mode or just change it right here. And then go right click and select subdivide. Then open the subdivide settings right here and change this to 100. So by default it will be changed to 100. But of course you can re just, uh, you know, select it a bunch of times. But it's just for render sake. And, uh, let's just unhide by hitting Alt H or right here. Remember Alt H is going to unhide every single thing you have hide it so if you have a lot of things hidden you probably just need to go and individually set what you want now go to see and render again and yeah this is this is very good so far but uh let me show you also some of the settings right here so noise scale is good to be uh the the uh, scale of the noise so as we scale it up you can see it yeah that's how it looks so just don't touch that um 
detail that's something that is very useful like this or this so you can see through uh, if you have value of 15 to 16 um, it's good to look like a landscape if you have like zero it's going to look very smooth but you know watercolor and roughness just don't change that roughness is going to be like if you made a cable zero is like glass and one is like a cable or something like that which is very rough location this is the where you can customize the landscape um, if you just go right here this will change where which landscape property so this is infinite keep that in mind this is infinite this never repeats well of course if you go back yes but uh it never repeats it just uh keeps on going it's infinite so if you don't like the default one which in my opinion i really like it but uh, maybe this you know what yes maybe you want it to or somehow you know you it's totally procedural that's why it's called procedural it's because it's just the you know and you probably may be asking why do we need cycles well because of displacement this add-on uses displacement um to display the height values so uh just make sure you have cycles enabled for that um because uh, until now uh it doesn't work for eevee you can see we have a little bit of snow right there but that's a glitch with the add-on just don't just don't touch that um um but yeah this is still in beta but yeah i really like the result let's try to change this down to zero see what happens and you can also use the z-axis right there Escape. so so we're back so i really like this uh i think the default one really looks good so continuing on texture scale don't change that to be how much the um the landscape this is going to be the texture scale, like the UVs of the um, of the rock and moss texture. I think the default one looks good, but for some reason you need to change it. It's right here. Bump strength is the strength of the bump, which is basically faking a small height value of the um, textures. Um, by the way, these are, I think these are 4K or 8K textures, so these are pretty good, and they're all packaged inside of the add-on. Um, displacement scale, don't play with that. Uh, I don't know what, what happens if you play with that, but I don't know. But yeah, just keep it at one. Ripples is the um, you know water ripples. So if you if you somehow don't need ripples, because sometimes I really like to do these basic scenes. There you go, you don't have ripples. The old version, version 1 of this add-on, didn't have ripples. It's not currently available anymore because, you know, I don't know why, but Blender Market didn't let me sell that. But maybe I'll include the file in the file. But yeah, if you want, and you can uh, customize the ripples. We have a uh, water noise scale, which is the scale of the ripples. So maybe you want to have like a million <laughs> um, water water detail is how much the detail of the water you could see as i scroll to zero and one it just changes much more realistic and then also the scale uh strength sorry it's uh you know it's the same deal as the bump strength so just keep it very low down to 0.02 it's a pretty good value and that's basically it but finally we have this water asset so you can click on that and if we scale it right there you can see this is just an extra plane with the uh, the actual material the actual water texture applied um because um the water is actually just this node group inside of that um but yeah, that's it. You could just, uh, it's the same thing. You can change how much ripples, what's the base color, noise scale, all of that thing. So let's go right here and let's just uh, change this down to 0 0.007, I think. So yeah. So now it's on top of this, but probably I'll just uh, make a new option of disabling the, the water. But uh, yeah. There's also going to be different landscape on version 2.1. It's 
it's going to be canyon, desert, and all of that. And again, the panel will be displayed right here. So yeah, that's basically all the basics to create a little simple scene in Blender with the landscape add-on. So now what you need to do is press F F12 and uh, <laughs> I'll render the scene out. And then we'll show you how to do some basic compositing just to look a little bit extra. Okay, it finished render, so let's just uh, hit X and uh, go right here. Uh, click on use notes and then uh, let's just uh, go right here and uh, using the node for angular add-on we can also uh, control shift and click it's going to add a viewer node so that's pretty useful also one thing that could be much useful for uh, you know organizing sakes is to shift and right click and just drag that up so if you do that it's going to add what's called a rewrite that's available on all of the uh, editors and you can even search rewrote there we go it's just basically a little dot so yeah it's pretty cool so you can also connect different nodes and stuff basically for organizing i'm good to update my how to organize uh, things in blender uh, tutorial so make sure to check that out i'm good to remake that so uh yeah so let's get started by hitting shift a and we are going to add a alpha over node so basically what we're going to do is now a uh, what's called a uh, vignette effect. So basically it has like those borders, very soft borders. So now we going to shift A again and let's search for the blur node right there. And also you can use the box mask or the ellipse mask, but I'm going to use the box mask um, right there. I'm going to do a separate tutorial on this, um, covering more in depth. But uh, yeah, just connect all of this up. A control shift click if you want. Uh, just to preview. Remember, in compositing, you can use V to zoom out and Alt V to zoom in. And uh, let's just get this right here. I think this should look good. So now preview this right here. Control Shift, click on the blur node. And let's just uh, click, drag down, let go. And now we can uh, type a number like 5,000. Uh, 500, sorry. And uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I put the size instead. Don't put it on the size, you need to put it on the image. There you go. You can now see that it takes a little effect. You could leave like this and maybe put like some text right here, but uh, uh, we wanted inverts, so search for an invert node or a color ramp and just uh, right there, invert. And uh, yeah, you need to change this uh, right here to black. I think it's nice and then you just need to play around with a blur maybe you can set it to 600 or just uh make it a little bit bigger right there play around with how this looks then yeah i think that looks pretty good just experiment and maybe for the final one you can uh drag down let go then you can add right here a six maybe that's just going to blur a little bit more um, so I think that looks pretty good you could just uh, change this even more but you know and also by the way if you want to use a color ramp a converter color ramp and there you go and you just need to click right here on this drop down and click on flip values so that's uh, pretty easy and yeah if you also don't, uh, I'm going to be making an add-on called More Nodes, uh, which offers more nodes inside of Blender and presets and that sort of stuff. So if you're interested on that, it'll be coming soon. But yeah, this is our final node setup. But if you want, you can also add a Clair node. So go Filter and Clair. Now go from Streaks to Foglo. Just change it to an eye. I always do this, you know, a little bit of Clair. But yeah, that's uh, the simple basic setup. Hope you enjoyed this small quick tips tutorial. And yes, let's just put on the pure node and right there. So we made it through this, from this to look like this. So if you enjoyed this quick tips tutorial and make sure to purchase the add-on in the link in the description. I spent a lot of effort and version 2.1 will be coming out soon once we get a few. 
uh, purchases so make sure to view that and also by the way um, I'm very sorry until now I can't get the demo video to work on Blender Market I don't know why but uh, yeah just uh, make sure to check it out right here in the end screen you can see a link to subscribe and also a link to watch the trailer so if you like to watch that and learn more about it check that out for more cool renders and of course you can purchase the add-on in the description that will help me a lot and also will help you creating better landscape inside of blender and yeah that's it guys hope you have an awesome day thank you so much for watching this and for hopefully purchasing the add-on if you like it and we'll see you all in my next video